board. And the play comes out to the corner. It's uh, Petrov. Petrov in front to Gusev. Gusev before he can shoot his block. Here we come now on the left side. Up there with Paul Henderson. The second loose is up there. the boards to center. This is Vladimir Lutenko. He has it taken away from him by McGregor going in with Jimmy Harris and one man back in front of the goal. He shoots. Oh, and it's blocked. They bang it. It's scored. Oh, Came right back and got the rebound. Make it down to four. Oh, Henderson. Everybody else getting into the middle of it. Now here's Joe in a 
tussling match with uh, Pucci beating on the... The June label, two fights started. And just when it looked like the players would sort out the problems, defenseman Steve Durbano charged from the bench and blindsided Bobby Hull to trigger a bench-clearing brawl, something the WHA cities have grown accustomed to as the league slowly destroys itself. WHA really is in uh, relation to the standing, Gary, with the Arrows uh, in fourth place, and they are only, uh, they are tied in effect with Edmonton, just uh, five points behind Quebec, with 33 points apiece, Birmingham with 30, Cincinnati with 30, and then Indianapolis with 24, but that, those four clubs, or even five clubs, from Quebec to Cincinnati on down, uh, there's going to be quite a scramble to see if uh, any one club can separate and pick up into that uh, number three spot. If you get into that third spot, you can take a run at the leaders. You've got uh, New England with 51 points and Winnipeg in second place with 43. All right, moving to center ice for the Arrows, John Tonelli, Ted Taylor, and Cam Connor for the Bulls, Peter Merritt, Paul Henderson, and Tony Casolato are almost ready for second period action. Some problem with the ice down below to the right side of the center ice red line as we look at it from here. The line's been working on that. They're busy little guys. I'll tell you, they'll scrape up a little bit of snow and pack it into if they have a bit of a chip out of the ice right down to the uh, concrete floor, Jerry. There's a concrete floor under this ice. The ice is about maybe, oh, three quarters of an inch thick and uh, they keep it cool enough to keep that ice good and solid. Yeah, but they don't do windows. Face off in the center ice zone. Tonelli against Marin on the draw. The second period is underway. Now Taylor for the Arrows. Got it to Al McLeod. Shooting it to the Birmingham zone. Back to get it for the Bulls. Westrom. Westrom, the former Minnesota Fighting Saints defenseman. Now to Hogan. On right wing it comes to Casolato. Now to Marin trying to clear it. Connor holds it in. Now the puck picked up by Westrom. Shoots at the center on right wing for Hoganson. Flips it into the Houston zone. Going in after it for the Bulls is Henderson. It's cleared away by Zimmerman, the Arrows goaltender. Now John Hughes fails to clear it. It's held in by Birmingham. Ted Taylor pokes it away for the Arrows. It's picked up in center ice by Westrom. He's bumped by Connor heavily along the boards and drops. Now on the far wing, it's Taylor in his own zone for the Arrows. John Hughes falls on his own accord. It's picked up by Al McLeod. He tried to get it to Tonelli. He does over on right wing now for Taylor. Taylor in the center ice zone for the Arrows. Moving in with Connor. Taylor in on the right wing, looking to make a play. Tried to center it. Westrom breaks it up. Here's Tonelli in after it. Not a Taylor. Taylor takes a hit from Casolato. Al McLeod in, over skates it, and here come the Bulls. Marin tried to clear it. Got it to Henderson in the center ice zone. Back to Marin. Taylor after him. Marin and Taylor fight for it along the far boards in center ice. Here's McLeod for the Arrows. Tried to get it to Tonelli. It was off the target. 
picking it up is Castellano in his own zone. Now to Hoganson, moving out in center right. Lead pass for Henderson, moving in against Hughes and Lukowicz. Pulled down on the play by Lukowicz. No penalty called, and the Bulls can't believe it. Here comes John Hughes in center right for the Arrows. Long shot, right on. Stopped by the goaltender, Garrett. He sets it up for defenseman Steve Durbano. Checked in the play by Ruskowski. Here comes Gorman out in center ice. Checked by Preston. Now up with it. Dave Henson. Terry Ruskowski after him. Made by Port. Ruskowski's pulled down. Play moves right on. Now it's cleared into the Houston zone. Play is stopped now. It's going to be called offside at the Houston blue light. At the end of two periods, a correction in that earlier oh, score we gave you, Cincinnati and Quebec. We were told it was the uh, Stingers leading three to nothing in the third period. Well, at the end of two, it's the Cincinnati Stingers two and the Quebec Nordique nothing. Face off will be outside of the Houston blue line as the referee has a little meeting with one of the linesmen, Mickey Jasko. Here's Terry Ruskowski on the draw against Dave Gorman, just outside of the blue line of the Houston Arrows. Now referee Ron Eagle blowing his whistle. He's over at the Birmingham bench, tacking it over with Glenn Sonmore. Birmingham coach. One thing about Glenn Sonmore, he's just as fiery as his hockey club. He's a competitive guy, isn't he? He is not afraid to uh, speak his mind, and Ron Ego is saying, uh, hey, probably saying cool it a little bit, or uh, I'm going to have to give you a bench minor. But Ron's got a pretty good relationship uh, with the players and with the coaches, and that he's been around for a while, and he can handle these situations without getting them out of hand. Here is Hansen into the Houston zone after the puck. Shella has it for the Arrows, trying to clear it. Hit by Gorman. The Arrows clear it down the ice. Steve Durbano back to get it in his own zone for the Bulls. Checked in the play. Ruskowski and Preston knock Durbano down. Now the puck is cleared out in center ice. And here comes Phil Roberto for Birmingham. Into the Houston zone. Drop pass now to Hansen. Ruskowski after him. Hansen checked by Ruskowski. Cleared around. Durbano with a point shooting. That's off the target. Now Hansen tried to flip it in front. Does. Knocked away by Zimmerman. Here's Durbano after it. It's knocked wide. Penalty coming up here as we have Ruskowski pushing in front with Durbano. And there's going to be a penalty here, I believe, to Rich Preston. And now the linesman is standing in front of that Arrows goal. And I think Preston's going to get the gate here for the Arrows. Uh, let's wait and see from referee Ron Ego. Yeah, it's a cross-checking penalty to the Arrows. Rich Preston at 2.15 of the second period. Birmingham, who trails one to nothing, will have the man advantage. Well, any time in front of that net or beside the net, the Birmingham club are big and solid, and they're going to try and jam the front of the net. You've got to clear them out of there, all that hard work in front. Preston uh, taking the man into the boards. Really did not get the stick up in that cross-checking position, but with all the activity, Ron Eagle, I think just feeling somebody had to go, and uh, Rich Preston was the one that got the nod. Base off will be to the right of the Houston goaltender, Lynn Zimmerman, Larry Lunn out with... Terry Ruskowski, Paul Popeil, and John Schella. The Bulls go with Stewart. He's had a bushel load of chances here tonight already, along with Mahovlich and Napier up front. Brent Hughes and Dale Hoganson on the points. Face off to the right of Arrows goaltender Lynn Zimmerman. The Bulls get the draw at the left point. Brent Hughes in along the boards now for Stewart. Centers it. Mahovlich a shot. What a save by Zimmerman. Larry Lund knocks it down to the corner. Tried to clear it out. It's held in by Hoganson. Hoganson for the Bulls at the right point. Now over along the near boards. Brent Hughes in. A shot. He scores! Brent Hughes, as Zimmerman was screened in front, Hughes scores on the power play for Birmingham to tie it at 1-1. Well, Brent Hughes has been a thorn in the side of the Arrows in that last game at home. He was a big factor. He parked himself in front, and he uh, redirected that puck in front of the net. It looked like Henderson may have gotten a piece of it to change the direction in between the legs of Zimmerman. There was a little hole there, and in she went. I think it may have been Stewart who changed directions on it if he did touch it. We'll wait for the official announcement. Goal by Hughes. They put up on the scoreboard. And that makes it 1-1. Here is Brent Hughes clearing it in for Stewart. That's too far ahead. Zimmerman out to try to clear it away. Gave it away. A shot. They score. Mahovlich is the hero. Gave it away in their own zone. They got a little careless in the big end. Frank Mahovlich put Birmingham on top. And the Coliseum erupts. Well, the momentum in the hockey game was really the arrows until the last couple of seconds. Zimmerman, controlling that puck, just dumped it, went off the inside of the stick of uh, the Birmingham player, and Mahavalich was right in front. 
really a tough break. That's a real tough break for the Arrows. Back to live action. The Arrows in offside at the Birmingham Blue Line. Stewart made the play as he deflected that pass by Lynn Zimmerman. That's one thing. If a goaltender is going to come out and handle that puck, he better make doggone sure he gets it by the guy who's in for checking it. Well, that was a kind of unusual because Zimmy went to the safe side. He went to the safe side, Jerry. He fired it along or toward the boards. Uh, really hard to figure that you could get in trouble that way. He was shooting it up the boards. It went off the inside of the stick out in front. Back to live action. It's John Schell in center ice to John Gray. Gray in for Larry Lund. It's taken away by Durbano. And here comes Marin for Birmingham. Clearing it into the Houston zone. Zimmerman out. Has that puck. Tried to shoot it around. Henderson does in the corner. Here's Shella. Shella tried to dig it out of there. Durbano holds it in with a shot. It goes wide. Along the far boards. Here's Popeil in against Henderson. Gray moving in there. Now got it to Paul Popeil. Paul Popeil for the arrows, starting out of his own zone, still with that puck. Popeil, lead pass and center ice for Gray, moving in on the left wing. They call that one a two-line pass, and play is called. Faceoff will return to the Houston zone. And from the Coliseum in Birmingham, this is Houston Arrows Hockey. Outdoor Equipment Incorporated. John Tonelli for the arrows, trying to move into the Birmingham zone, was bumped back by Turkowitz. Turkowitz in his own zone in the near corner now to Steve Durbano. Gave it away to Carter in front. He was checked in the play by Merritt. Here's Henderson moving out. The arrows shoot it back in. It's offside. Birmingham Bulls picking up two unanswered goals thus far in the second period, leading the hockey game 2-1. Well, a little turnaround there for the arrows in front of that Birmingham zone. They just couldn't get the shot away. Camp Connor was in good position. It would have been almost an equalizer there as the arrows have had a couple of tough breaks here in the second period. Scoring plays, Hughes on the power play, his seventh from Hoganson and Mahovlich tied it at 1-1 at 2.31 in the period. Then Mahovlich from Stewart at 2.43 put the balls on top, 2-1. It was Mahovlich, his seventh goal of the season. Here's Brent Hughes trying to clear it for Birmingham, got it to Dave Gorman, shooting it in center ice, and here's Phil Roberto for the Bulls. Clears it up into the crowd, and play is called. There will be a face-off coming up over along the far boards in center ice. 15-51 remaining here in the second period. Houston on top. Two to one, a good-sized crowd on hand here in Birmingham tonight. Well, it looks like uh, at least a, a nine or ten, uh, maybe even 11,000. A lot of youngsters here tonight, Jerry. Phil Roberto on that right wing for Birmingham has not really played all that great for this club. A couple of goals and a couple of assists in uh, ten games, but he could prove to be a pretty solid winger for you. Had a very serious arm injury a few years ago while playing for the St. Louis Blues in the offseason. Now we have Luka, which bumped by Beaton. Now in center ice, here's John Hughes, bump of the play by Beaton and Westrup, a little pushing and shoving going on. Ryskowski pins Beaton along the glass, and all the players move along the near boards. Now Gorman pushing at Preston. Gorman and Preston pushing at one another. John Hughes gets into it for the arrows. Westrup in the middle of it. Now Ryskowski there for the arrows. Everybody milling around right below us here in the center ice area, right at the center ice red line along the near boards. And it seems that order has been restored, but we are getting penalties here. It's called by... Referee Ron Eagle, I believe, to Gorman and to Preston, two of the guys who aren't really known for their uh, rough stuff. Well, it's uh, really only a matter of time uh, when things are going to break out there. You take a look at Preston's uh, record. He's uh, just got 21 minutes in penalties uh, so far this season. And uh, you take a look at Gorman in that department. Uh, he has uh, 40 minutes in penalties. So uh, well, they're not all that inactive. Preston with a couple here tonight earlier. Westrom going to the uh, Birmingham goal to our right. Garrett, he's coming off a rather serious eye injury, Jack, and I don't know if it's bothering him or what, but he has the face mask off, and he's talking to referee uh, Ron Eagle. What happened to Garrett, did you hear? Well, uh, he was playing in a game against New England there, and uh, was, oh, I'd say about, uh, let's see, he suffered an eye injury in a game against the Whalers December 27th, and uh, this is his first start back in the net, Jerry. Uh, Anytime you get an eye injury, you want to be very sure the doctors are very particular. Uh, a jolt around the eye for a goaltender, you can get uh, a little bit of blood bleeding inside the eye that can cause you some problems. So they, they are very, very careful about that and make sure that that injury is well over before they'll start a goaltender back in action. It's just hard, and of course, they're on that ice entire game, every game. Two to one, the Bulls leading. The Arrows have it inside their own line. Morris Lukowicz in the center ice zone for Houston. Moving into the Birmingham zone, trying to get around Westrom. In a shot! Hit the side of the net. It's covered up now by the goaltender, Garrett. And he holds on. Face-off will be to the left of 
Goaltender John Garrett. Morris Lukowicz using that quickness of his. Well, good speed. He hit the blue line. He kept skating, and that's the difference. He worked his way around the player. And then on the backhand, he didn't have much of an angle, but uh, you never know. Sometimes those pucks will work their way between the legs. How did Westrom play that? Should he have backed up a little bit, tried to keep the angle on? Uh, yeah, but it's the speed of... Uh, of Lukowicz that catches you, but he did keep him to the outside, and that's the important thing. Then the goaltender, as Garrett could on, and did on that play, keeps the good angle. Back to live action. Durbano in his own zone on the left wing for John Stewart. Tried to clear it over on right wing. He does to Bob Stevenson, moving in against Larry Hale. Stevenson cutting in. A shot. A trickling shot. Stopped by Zimmerman. Rebound. Tucked in on the short side. Stopped by Zimmerman. As Stewart had another chance. Now at the point, Turkowitz misses it. Has to go back in his own zone after it for the Birmingham Bulls. They lead two to one, each team a man short for a minute and 25 seconds. Here is Stewart for Birmingham in the center right zone. Tried to flip it ahead for Turkowitz. Ruskowski takes it away, but he lost it to Stewart. Moving in, a shot stopped by the Arrows goaltender Zimmerman. He holds on. Stewart played a strong game tonight for the Bulls. He's not very well known, I don't think, in hockey circles. He's a college youngster who played at uh, Bowling Green and a little bit for the Cleveland uh, Crusaders in this league, but uh, pretty good hockey player from the looks of things. Well, I know Bill Dineen always liked him. Uh, he seems to have uh, good ability to move the puck around, and uh, he's a pretty intelligent hockey player. He looks like he's uh, added a little beef, Jerry. One of the criticisms before was his, uh, uh, he just did not have the strength, but he seems a little bit heavier now. John Tonelli out with Don Laraway against John Stewart and Bob Stevenson. Face off to the right of Zimmerman in the Houston zone. The Bulls get the draw to Durbano. Back at the right point for Turkowitz. He didn't know which way to turn. Goes back and center ice to get it. Flips it ahead. Now Paul Popeil intercepts the Laraway in for John Tonelli. One man back, a shot. He's gone! John Tonelli, a wicked slap shot. Moving in at the left wing. Ties it. at 2-2. A perfect passing combination. You could not get a better one than that. Uh, that puck was moved around with uh, exactly the right expertise. They took that puck on the left wing, a good lead pass, and then a good pass at the blue line to set Tonelli in all alone, and who did he ever wind up on that one? Up in that upper corner. Hoo-hoo. <laughs> Well, you know, you get them that good, you got to be excited about them. That was a great goal. Great goal. And a fine young hockey player, John Tanelli. He's going to get better and better. Here come the Bulls. Back the other way into the Houston zone. A shot. Oh, just missed by Marin. Now Popeil taken out by Casalotto. Marin with that puck. Got it to Casalotto. Shooting. Zimmerman the save. He drops it off. Covers up on it now. But Casalotto closing it. I'll tell you, as I watch uh, Zimmy in the net, uh, Tripper, he, might, he played that game the other night and... Uh, I, I did not see the game, uh, listen to it, of course, uh, but he has picked up a lot of confidence. He is playing a very solid goal in there for the Arrows right now. Bill Deneen directing traffic over the Arrows bench, sends Larry Lunn out to get the faceoff. Larry Lunn, one of the best faceoff men around, if not the best in probably. the WHA. I would say probably the best. He's uh, got that big blade of his, maximum uh, length and width, and it comes in handy. Face off to the right of Zimmerman in the Houston zone. Lund gets the draw, put it back in front of Zimmerman. He sets it up for Paul Popeil. Popeil for the Arrows on right wing for Shella. Moving up to his own line and center ice for Larry Lund. Lund flips it down into the corner in the Birmingham zone. Garrett flips it around on right wing for Casalotto. Play is called. And I believe the Arrows may be called here for too many men on the ice. Whoa. Let's wait and see. Now looking over at the Arrows bench is Ego. Wait, I think somebody may have thrown something from the crowd, and I think that's what's uh, stopping play. I think something may have been thrown from the crowd, or was it a whistle from the crowd? The officials looking back up uh, this way behind the Arrows bench and the crowd looking around. Let's see if Ego is going to call a penalty or what. I don't think it's a penalty against the Arrows. The, what, what is it when you change players, Jack? The player going off the ice and the player coming on, they have to be within 10 feet of the bench to be considered out of the play, right? And, uh, of course, uh, they have to watch playing the puck, too. Uh, the referee will take that into consideration. Uh, the guy that's going off has to be careful not to make a play on the puck while the other man is on the ice. So. You're right, Jerry. Uh, apparently, someone in the stands with a whistle. Uh, any Anything like that, throwing something on the ice or anything that distracts the players, makes them think that uh, uh, the play has stopped or hasn't stopped, that can cause serious injury to a hockey player. Uh, he has to rely on the... Uh, calls and uh, the whistles that they they indicate a stoppage of play. If somebody sort of slows up and thinks the play is over, and somebody else uh, wires him with a, a shot when he's not expecting it, that's when you're going to get hurt. Referee Ron Eagle over talking to Glenn Sonmore had earlier talked to Bill Deneen saying, "Look at boys, the three of us out there have the whistles. Don't listen to the crowd." Now the arrows clear it into the Birmingham zone. 
Going in Laraway at the right point for Shella. Shella over to the left point for Paul. Popeil takes the shot. Gear the six day. Now the puck picked up by the Bulls. Here comes Marin. Checked by John Tonelli. What a good effort by Tonelli. He lost it now to Hoganson. 18 seconds left in the penalties. Hoganson moving in. Tonelli breaks it up. Now here's Shelley in after it against Marin. They bang it along the board. Now here's Tonelli moving in against Castellano, battling for it. Puck comes back to Westrom shooting. Stopped in front by John Shella with the skate. He lost it. Gets it again for the arrow. Shella having trouble moving out of his own zone. Checked by Marin. Shella still working hard. Shella, as the penalized players are back on, fails to clear it. Shella comes up with it again for the Arrows. Looking for an opening. Clears it around on left wing now to Paul Pulfeel. He flipped it out in center ice. It's picked up by Laraway. Now to Tonelli. Ahead for Laraway. Too far. Racing it after down Laraway against Hoganson. Hoganson bumps Laraway into the boards. Laraway played the puck. Put it on side. And here come the Bulls back. Roberto. Down the right wing in center ice. That's over Houston blue line shooting it wide. Going in after it. Scott Campbell for the Arrows. Plays it around on the wing. Tonelli couldn't get to it. Gorman at the blue line holds it in. Now Al McLeod has it in the far corner. Hit on the play by Roberto. Up with the puck. Roberto in the corner now for Gorman. Checked by McLeod. Up with it. Roberto again. Looking to make a play. Centers it. Zimmerman intercepts and holds on. And play is called as Preston and Hanson have words with one another. And the linesman gets between Hanson and Tonelli now as cooler heads prevail. The amazing thing about tonight's game, even though you've got two very physical hockey clubs out there, the speed of the game's been pretty good. The tempo of the game's been pretty good, and there's been some uh, fine uh, playmaking out there, good passing, along with the hitting. So it's been an exciting and entertaining game to watch. We hope you're enjoying a third simulcast of the season. Face off to the right of Zimmerman. They get it to Hanson. Checked on the play by Taylor, but Brent Hughes holds it in. Now to Hanson in the corner. Back at the point for Brent Hughes. In that Houston zone, he centers it. Roberto was checked. Now up with it. Roberto along the near boards at the left point for Turkowitz. Now to Roberto. He missed it. Here's Hanson on the end boards against Scott Campbell. They bang up along the end boards in the Houston zone. It's centered. Zimmerman knocks it away. Now Scott Campbell on right wing for Steve West. Hanson drills him into the corner. The arrows can't clear it. Now Taylor has it go to the center right zone. Picking it up. Brent Hughes for Birmingham. Watched by Ted Taylor. Chased back inside his own line. Now to Jim Turkowitz. To Dave Hanson. Connor steps into him. Now the puck cleared out in center ice. It's picked up by Al McLeod for the Euros. 2-2 game. Here's Scott Campbell. He's bumped on the play by Hanson. They push and shove. Now it's third into the Birmingham zone. They give it away to Connor. Connor in front for Taylor. Couldn't get to it. West goes down. Here comes Roberto back for Birmingham. To his own line in center ice. Bill Roberto moving in across the line in the top side with Gorman in ahead of the play over on the left wing. And from the Coliseum in Birmingham, this is Houston Arrows Hockey. By treating people right, that's how Klein's Jewelry has grown from a very small location to our two beautiful stores. This one on Westheimer and one on the Gulf Freeway at Alameda Square. For the past five years, Klein's has stood behind everything we sell with a money-back, unconditional guarantee on our quality and our price. If you're interested in the finest quality at the lowest price, then shop at Klein's Jewelry where the scales of value are tipped in your favor. Mary Ruskowski for the Arrows in his own zone. Now to Shelley. He lost it at the blue line. Two on one. The Bulls. Mahovlich in with Stewart. Oh, Popeil broke it up with a nice defensive play. Here's Terry Ruskowski for the Arrows. Ahead now for Lukowicz in center right. Lead pass for Preston. Too far ahead. Preston racing in against Napier. The goaltender plays it away in the corner. Here's Lukowicz after it. Lawrence Lukowicz for the Arrows. Checked by Napier who clears it out for Mahovlich. One on one against Shella and Shella breaks it up. Here's Terry Ruskowski for the Arrows. In his own zone on right wing for Shella. He let Lukowicz pick it up. Morris Lukowicz for the Arrows in this 2-2 game. Lost it in front to Mahovlich, but Lukowicz went back to check him. The Arrows getting a little careless in their own zone. Here comes Lukowicz out with it. Three on two. Ahead for Ruskowski in on right wing against Westrup. Ruskowski to Lukowicz. Lukowicz stops now. Back at the left point, Paul Popeil holds it in with a nice play. In on the inboards for Terry Ruskowski. He was checked by Westrup. Ruskowski steals it, looking to center it. Ruskowski with it. At the right point, Shella, the shot. Oh, way up into the crowd. Well... The space program got a little aid there, assisted by John Shella. He let one go. It looked like one of those Vanguard rockets taking <laughs> off. Of course, Shell trying to get it away quickly. He had a lot of guys converging on the net, and that means timing. If you can get that puck uh, to the front of the net quickly, the goaltender is probably going to give you a good rebound, and uh, you've got the guys in front. You might as well take advantage of them. 11.03 remaining in the second period of play. It's the Arrows 2, the Birmingham Bull 2. Lund, Gray, and Laraway out against Merritt, Henderson, and Casolato for the Birmingham Bowl. 
Now John Hughes clears it to the Birmingham line. Brent Hughes knocks it down. They clear it over to Casolato, who shoots it down to the Houston zone. Back to get it and touching it. Campbell. The Bulls are called for icing. Mike Napier is coming off a belt with the flu, and he hasn't seen that much ice time tonight, Jackson. Well, there's been a lot of uh, problems with this Birmingham club as far as injuries and illness. Uh, the Arrows having the same problem, Jerry. You were saying that uh, a lot of the guys picking up the flu in this last road trip. It's tough when you're traveling as much as they are and you're hitting uh, different uh, climatic zones, going up to that cold north and then hitting uh, a little area of Cincinnati down into the south a little bit. You know what it's all about. Uh, yeah. Be nice to head home tomorrow, I tell you. Arrows in action with two games this weekend at the Summit. Tomorrow night against Indianapolis, and on Sunday night, a 6 o'clock game against the Edmonton Oilers, and that should be a dandy. Face off to the right of Garrett in the Birmingham zone. Larry Lund against Peter Marin. They get lined up for the draw. Now they're ready. And from the faceoff, Marin got it back to Brent Hughes, back of his own goal for Birmingham, watched by Larry Lund. Now over on left wing for DeBano, misses the check by Larraway and center right. Here's Henderson clearing it into the far corner of the arrow zone. Zimmerman out to play it away from Marin. Now Lund steps into a man. The arrow's hitting everything that moves right now, and here comes Larraway for Houston with Connor. Larraway in the center right zone, has it knocked away by Brent Hughes, tried to flip it through for Connor. It's intercepted by Marin and picked up by Birmingham in their own zone. Now DeBano tries to clear it. Scott Campbell couldn't pick it up. It's picked up by Durbano moving out on the left wing in the center right zone. Durbano moving into the Houston zone, centers it. Here's a pass to Marin. It's knocked away by the arrows, and here comes Larry Lund. On right wing to Larraway. One man back, three on one for Houston. Larraway going in deep, centers it. A shot, they got Scott Campbell after a great play by Don Larraway, who pulled out the goal center. He flipped it in front, and both Lund and Campbell were there, and Campbell pumped it into the empty net to put the arrows on top of three to two. Well, we might have to have more interviews, but quite a quite an effort by Don Larraway on that right wing. He had a four-on-one. It's good he capitalized on that one. He took everyone with him. The defenseman, the goaltender, and then back to Scott Campbell in pursuit into the open net. Larraway made a great play to get it through the goaltender and the defenseman, Brent Hughes. Well, that's what scared me a little bit. When he, after he made the move, I was wondering with uh, everybody going at him whether he'd have any room to get it back, but he certainly did. Here's Taylor for the Arrows now at his own line to Paul Popeil on right wing for Shella. Lead pass in for Taylor, knocked away by Gorman. Gorman in his own zone, pins Taylor to the board. Here comes Dale Hoganson, lost it to John Tonelli. Tonelli in turn loses it to Roberto. Now to Gorman in the center right zone. Shella breaks it up. Clears it ahead in center ice. Now Hoganson up with it. Moves into the Houston zone. Gave it away to Tonelli, who overstates it now. And Gorman has it. To Frank Beaton. Beaton clears it down into the corner in the arrow zone. Back after it, Ted Taylor. Now around on right wing for Cam Connor. Connor checked by Westrom. Cleared it out in center ice. And here's Hoganson with Tonelli all over him. Now Hoganson almost gave it away to Connor. Beaton with it. Gives it away to Taylor. Taylor ahead for Connor on the left wing. Off his skate. It's picked up by Westrom. The arrows leading 3-2. Now Westrom to Beaton along the near board. Got away from Connor, but cleared it out. Shella brought it back in offside. Is now Shella and Beaton pushing shove. They dropped the sticks and gloves. Everybody else getting into the middle of it. Now here's Shella in a tussling match with uh, Beaton. Beaton on the bottom. Shella and Beaton just uh, wrestling around. The linesmen move in and try to break it up. And everybody in close quarters, so no actual punches thrown as Shella and Beaton square off and have one another uh, tied up. And we're going to be getting penalties here. The linesmen try to pry the two of them apart. And let's see if they can get beaten, separated from Shella after beaten hit Shella over at that arrow's bench. That's a tough place to start things like that. Now Shella gets up, as does beaten, and we're going to be getting penalties here. Let's see if there's any further action as they make their way over to the penalty box. Everything seems to be in order. As Shella heads to the sin bin, as does Frank Beaton. And we're going to be getting penalties here. And from the Coliseum in Birmingham, this is Houston Arrows Hockey. And Coke is hot. It's got the taste and the feel of your life. Coca-Cola. You and me. Looking for some extra fun. We just keep going down. Looking to live. Looking to love. Give me some Coke and the sun above. Everybody wants a little light. Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola, everybody wants a little light. 
John Shella, the Arrows, and Frank Beaton of the Birmingham Bulls each get seven minutes. Well, they pick up uh, two and five each. It started just by the Arrows bench there. Shella got a couple of shots at early. Beaton with that left hand. Shella taking him down over his back. Boy, there's a lot of strength involved in that one. That can take it out of you. But, of course, with the major penalties, Jerry, uh, both teams will be playing with the, the regular uh, five men aside. 10.41 of the second period, the time of the penalties, Shella and Beaton, high-sticking minors and majors for fighting. Jerry Drupiano, along with Jack Stanfield. We are back here in Birmingham, 3-2. to two. The Arrows leading. The Bulls have it in their own zone. Here is Jim Turkowitz in center right. Checked by Tonelli and John Hughes. The Arrows break it up. Turkowitz goes back to his own blue line for it for the Birmingham Bulls. On left wing, almost gave it away to Tonelli. Tonelli all over Turkowitz. Now Stewart battles for it. Loose puck in the center ice zone. Brent Hughes takes over for Birmingham. Checked by Taylor. Now to Stevenson. He hits Al McLeod with it. Here come the arrows back the other way. Ted Taylor for Houston. Taylor moving in. A pass through for Connor. Connor racing in on the inboard. Centers in the front. Tonelli has it knocked away by Stevenson. Now Frank Mahovlich gave it away to Taylor. Taylor lost it to Stevenson who clears it out. Here's Mahovlich checked by Taylor. Up with it. Stevenson wearing that bird cage face mask protecting a broken nose. Now in center ice. It's picked up by Al McLeod of the Arrows to Cam Connor. Now ahead for Tonelli. It's intercepted by Stewart. John Stewart misses. The puck as he was checked by Cam Connor. It's tied up over at that Birmingham bench just below us here to our left and play is Carl. What do you think of the action thus far? Well, I think the Arrows have uh, certainly not lost any momentum. Uh, they, they had that little lapse, and it was a couple of quick goals, but they still have uh, remained a determined hockey club, and that's a good sign. We should mention for the fans who are newcomers to this game, with coincidental major penalties, neither team has to play a man short. That means uh, five minutes or... Seven minutes as uh, both players just received. Now the puck comes back to Hoganson at the right point in the Houston zone, working in against Paul Popiel. Now Preston checks Hoganson along the far board. Four players jam up and hold it and play as called. And this is the kind of game where you see the referees blowing the whistle quickly to keep things in order and from breaking out. Well, and, I think, uh, and I think particularly as the game has developed, it's been a little rougher here and a little more uh, aggressive action in the second period. Face off to the left of Zimmerman in the Houston zone. Ruskowski against Stewart. Loose puck. Ruskowski got it to Preston. And here comes Rich Preston for the Arrows. It's in a ice checked by Henderson. Preston flips it down into the Birmingham zone. Garrett out to set it up for Pat Westrup. In his own zone. On the wing for Casolato. Shoots it out in center ice for Marin down the right side. Clears it into the Houston zone. Now going back to get it for the Arrows defenseman, Larry Hale. Hale starting up. Cleared it ahead for Ruskowski. Too far ahead. Going back to get it for the Bulls. Westrup. But Gary comes out to play it because there was not going to be an icing call on it. Now Preston keeps that puck in play into the Birmingham zone. Now Westrum a pass on the near boards for Henderson. He's checked by Ruskowski but clears it to the Houston line where Larry Hale has it ahead for Terry Ruskowski. In center ice checked by Paul Henderson trying to move in. He lost it picking it up to Casolato. Now to Marin in front for Casolato. Larry Hale breaks it up. Now here is Casolato centering it. It's off the stick of Preston. It rolls to the blue line. Held in by Hoganson with a nice play. He centers it. Zimmerman knocks it away. Now Casolato dumps it in front. Bowles couldn't get to it. Lukowicz shoots it out. And here's a foot race for it. Rich Preston against Dale Hoganson. Preston with it. Stopping now. Trying to move around. The defense is pulled down. Arrows thought there should have been a penalty. Now the Arrows keep it in there. Here's Terry Ruskowski. In front for Lukowicz. And he lost it to Hoganson. The Arrows missing a great chance there. Here come the Bulls. Back on the right wing. It's Merrick. In across the line with Henson. Larry Hale breaks it up. Out for John Laraway. Laraway down the left wing. In against Brent Hughes. He stops now. Laraway trying to make a play. Dumps it in front. It's picked up by the Bulls. And here they come. The Arrows in a line change. Lead pass for Gorman. Now to Roberto. He missed it. And Larry Lund has it for the Arrows. Out in center ice for Henson. Ron Henson's moving in, but it's a two-line pass offside at the center ice red line. And play is called. Everything was happening there for a moment. <laughs> so many turnarounds. Awfully exciting. Explaining that two-line pass, Jerry. Coming out of your own zone, a player cannot advance too far ahead of the play. In other words, he cannot go uh, over the center right zone and take a pass from somebody within his own zone. And that's what happened there. Hansen's moving too far ahead of the play. The Arrows leading 3-2 to two here in the second period at Birmingham. Al McLeod in his own zone for Houston. Now to Ron Hensis. Out in center right to Larry Lund with Larraway. Two on one. 
Here's one. In for Laraway. In. A shot. That's stopped by Garrett. Rebound goes to Turkowitz. On the end boards in the Birmingham zone. On right wing for Roberto. Checked by Al McLeod. Here's Laraway taking a golf swing at it. Couldn't keep it in. McLeod in center ice trying to get his team back on side. Shoots it to the Birmingham line. Here's Laraway trying to move in. He's knocked down on the play by a Bulls player. That was Turkowitz. It's picked up by Brent Hughes. Veteran defenseman Brent Hughes out in center ice to Dave Gorman with Henson and Roberto. Here's Gorman looking to make a play to Roberto, and Zimmerman breaks it up. Now Gorman with it again on the end board for Roberto. Now a pass to Henson, rolls it to the side of the goal. Zimmerman covers up on the puck, and play is called. 5.47 remaining here in the second period of play. Houston 3, Birmingham 2. Now we're going to visit with uh, the captain of the Arrows, Terry Ruskowski and Don the Dart Laraway at the end of this uh, second period of action. So we'll be able to talk about that great play that Laraway made on that go-ahead goal. Don Laraway is passing the puck as well this year, I think, as he ever had. I think he'll uh, maybe give us a little insight into that in between the uh, second and third period. Face off to the right of Lynn Zimmerman, John Kelly against Stewart, a pair of number 18s on the draw. Stewart flips it in front in the slot. Here's Hoganson fanning on it. He's knocked down. Here's Tonelli for the arrow. With Taylor and Connor, a pass for Connor off the target. He comes up with it now, trying to shoot it in for Tonelli. It's offside with Taylor there first at the Birmingham Blue Line. That's that's one of those plays, you see a two-on-one situation, you want like Hex to get it ahead of your forward, and then it just rolls off your stick. Well, they kind of can uh, leave you in your sleep a few nights, so, <laughs> or leave you out of your sleep a few nights. Cam Connor sporting a red eye, a black eye. He got hit in the head with the puck the other night in Cincinnati. Part of this game, uh, the stick or the puck, a lot of times are the parts of the game that are going to give you those uh, gashes, but you go in and get stitched up and back into action. Ruskowski, Preston, and Lukowicz out against Stewart, Mahovlich, and Napier for the Birmingham Bulls. Here's Terry Ruskowski bumped in the play by Westrom. They both go down. Now in center right, here's Dale Hoganson dumping it down to the far end of the Houston zone. Back is Stewart. Bobeal takes him out along the board. Now they battle for the puck. It's centered for Napier. Here's Hoganson a chance. He may have grazed the post with that one. Napier with it, trying to make a play, gave it away to Lukowicz, and the arrow start back. Stopping now, Lukowicz at his own line. He's bumped by Napier. Here comes Paul Popeil for the arrow. Lead pass for Lukowicz, in on right wing, trying to get around Westrom, goes in deep, looking to make a play. It's Lukowicz on the end board for Ruskowski. He missed it. Here's Hoganson, bumped in the play by Preston to knock down. Here's Mahovlich in against Ruskowski, now to Preston. Preston for Lukowicz, it's taken away, and here comes Mahovlich for Birmingham. Moving to his own line and center line. Great Mahovlich. In, a shot blocked by Larry Hale. Rebound. Napier with it. Checked by Terry Ruskowski. Now to Lukowicz. Tried to flip it out for Preston. Napier breaks it up. Here's Brent Hughes for Birmingham. In for Mahovlich on the right wing. Going in against Paul Popeil. He looks to get it over for Marin. Marin fakes the shot. Now to Rubano. He missed it. And here comes Lukowicz back for the arrows to Ruskowski. Ahead for Lukowicz. In across the line. Now to Preston. In. A shot. Hits the leg in front. Now we have Ruskowski and Urbano bringing the stick up. Play goes right on. Urbano and Ruskowski. Got the stick and glove in here. Terry Ruskowski landing it right on Urbano and another right. Ruskowski flailing away with the right hand. Now the linesman move in and try to separate Urbano and Ruskowski. Now Urbano throws the right hand, hits the linesman, hits him again. And they go to the ice. Now the linesman try to pry Urbano and Ruskowski apart. As we told you, those linesmen have a tough job, and they're trying to pry apart a couple of hard-nosed competitors here. Terry Ruskowski of the Arrows and Steve Durbano of the Bulls, and now Ruskowski lands a right hand as they get loose. Now Durbano has a hold of Ruskowski's sweater, trying to get it over his head. The linesmen trying to pry Durbano and Ruskowski apart, have them partially separated. And now they're totally separated, and we're going to be getting... More penalties here is Steve Durbano and Terry Ruskowski. Went at it, off to our right in the Birmingham zone, and we're getting penalties here for sure. As Ruskowski and the linesman talk it over, I think Mickey Jasko may have taken a couple of shots to the head by Steve Durbano as Durbano tried to get a poke or two in at Terry Ruskowski. One thing, Ruskowski didn't have to fire it through that helmet because <laughs> Durbano's helmet had come off. Ruskowski getting a couple of quick ones. There isn't anybody quicker with the... Uh, the uh, shots there than Ruskowski. He's the quickest in the league, but of course you're going against uh, pretty good odds when you've got a six foot one, 200 pounder uh, standing there facing you. We're going to be getting penalties here from the Coliseum. 
in Birmingham. This is Houston Arrows Hockey. Scrooge here. <laughs> Not really. But just like Scrooge, I appreciate value. And this Weed Eater Clippy Trimmer is a great Christmas gift for only $19.95. Weed Eater brand trimmers cut grass with specially treated fishing line, neatly and fast. So get the Weed Eater Clippy Trimmer, just $19.95 for the little bit of Scrooge in all of us. Products distributed by Outdoor Equipment Incorporated. We're getting penalties here to Terry Ruskowski, the Euros, and Steve Durbano of the Birmingham Bulls. Jerry, I don't know what it is, but the guys that we're going to talk to between periods is certainly the highlight <laughs> of each period. Larry away with that fine play now. Uh, Ruskowski in action here against Durbano. We're going to be interested to talk to him about that one. And the Birmingham fans not all that happy with the call. In fact, many of them standing and thumbs down. It's an awfully partisan crowd. And we're going to get high sticking and fighting. And high sticking and fighting going to both. And a game misconduct coming to uh, the Birmingham player. Time of those penalties at uh, 15 minutes and 47 seconds. Some of those fans, I think, tried to get into it down to our right, and some of the Euros players went over to make sure Mr. Ruskowski got off the ice okay. So Durbano has gone for the game for gross misconduct, pulling the hair of Terry Ruskowski. There's a possibility he may have gone. Uh, if he didn't get, I'll tell you one thing, if he, if he didn't get it for pulling the hair, we know what he got it for because hitting a referee is not exactly a good part of the uh, action. And he fired a couple that, uh, he fired a couple that, that's why that job of the referees, Jerry, is awfully difficult. You get both guys in there swinging blindly and you can get one. Linesmen have to pry those guys apart and it's a, uh a tough job, but it was for pulling hair that uh, this, that Durbano got the gross misconduct for. That's a game misconduct. I don't know if there's any suspension involved or not. We'll have to check the rule book. But I, I, it, I think it's it's, uh, it's a uh, an infraction that it, on on the second or third time it's called, Jerry. There is a uh, more of a uh, uh, game misconduct situation after or a uh, uh, fine involved with with the uh, incident, but. Uh, I know the same thing happened earlier in the year uh, uh, with uh, against Edmonton when the Euros were playing Edmonton. Then uh, uh, Dave Stamenko Dave grabbed Stamenko. Cam Connors. Up. Right. Well, we're back to live action. It's been uh, a little rugged here in the second period. Arrow is leading the hockey game three to two in the Houston zone. Cam Connor got it to Ted Taylor. The Euros move out. Taylor flips it in for John Tonelli, moving in around Turkowitz. Tonelli goes to the corner, tries to make the play. He's tied up along the board. Now to Cam Connor. Connor for the arrows, looking for an open man. Got it back at the point for John Hughes. Hughes in front for Tonelli. He deflects it wide. Now Connor for the arrows, spinners it. It's off a stick of the bull. And Marin brings it out in center ice and starts back for Birmingham, but he gave it away to John Tonelli. Here's Tonelli twisting and turning in center ice ahead for Scott Campbell. Moving to the Birmingham line. He's checked, lost the puck. And Brent Hughes clears it down the ice for the Bulls. They will be called for icing. Back to touch it, John Hughes. And the Birmingham Bulls are called for icing. Well, when you can put the pressure on and uh, get the Bulls in a situation where they're going to start dumping the puck, you know that they're a little bit frazzled. And that's when you can take advantage of them. The Arrows are doing a good job of forechecking, Jerry, staying on top of the Birmingham club. Uh, and I think with the speed back on defense that you look at with the Birmingham club, they're not all that quick, so forechecking is going to be a key factor. You can uh, make them give it away and pick it up. A new line for the Arrows as they face off to the left of Garrett. Luka Wetch with Preston and Hensis as Bill Deneen juggles the line. It's going to be Gorman, Henson, and Roberto for Birmingham. And from the faceoff, Luka Wetch battles for it. Henson in there against Preston. It goes to the end boards. Now we have Preston battling Westrom for it. Luka Wetch moving in for the Arrows, trying to get it. Does center it for Hensis. Ron Hensis for the Arrows, dumps it on the end boards. Preston checked again by Westrom. Here's Rich Preston still with that puck. Watched by Hansen and Westrom. Preston fighting to keep it in play. Now it comes loose in the corner. Here's Lukowicz stepping into Gorman. Westrom and Preston push and shove. And now Gorman and Preston pushing. Here comes Hansen over for Birmingham. The linesman gets it. I tell you, 
A real pure six job can erupt here before it's all over tonight. Well, the thing that starts it is when everybody starts milling together, getting tightly together, uh, some of the rules instituted last year have sort of uh, <laughs> we've been infringing on the interpretation of them uh, with the, as the season goes along, but face off to the left of Garrett. Lukowicz against Gorman and the Euros got the draw to Hansis, but he was checked by Roberto, and here comes Gorman down the left wing in center right. Larry Hale picks it up for the Euros. Now to Morris Lukowicz, pumped on the play by Westrup, who rolls into the bowl zone and back to get it. Bill Hoganson, red-haired defenseman of the Birmingham Bull. Bill Hoganson, the Birmingham captain. Flips it over on the near wing now to Westrom. Moving up to his own line and center right. Now to Gorman shooting it into the Houston zone. And out of the goal, Zimmerman back of that net. Steers it on left wing for Morris Lukowicz. Takes a funny hop off. Comes back to the line. It's held in by Hansen of the bowl. Hansen a shot deflected. Hit the goal post. That shot by Hansen was deflected and hit the post. Now Hansen checked. Lukowicz, the arrows dump at the center right, up with it is Turkowitz. He clears it to the Houston zone. Larry Hale has it. Hale out in center right for Hansen, checked by Hansen. Now moving in, it's Gorman to Hansen, dumping it over on the far corner boards in the Houston zone. Roberto moving in. Paul Popeil pulls him down. Here's Stewart with it. Stewart rolls it in front. Oh, they score! Dave Hansen! It started like it looks like it was going wide, but it wound up going in behind Zimmerman. And Hansen for the ball gets his second goal of the year to tie it at 3-3, and that one hurt. Well, that puck was just harmlessly, or not so harmlessly, but going by the arrow's goal, it looked like it deflected off the player. Hansen rolled uh, almost up his body. You take a close look, uh, off a stick, up the body, and over top of Zimmerman. It almost uh, looked like it had radar on it to work its way in behind Zimmerman, but... Uh, a little bit of a bad break for the Arrows, uh, 18.01, the time of the goal. And uh, certainly setting a stage for a great third period of action. We've had quite a hockey game, Jerry. A minute 59 remaining in the second period. So that one was scored at 18.01 of the second period. Hansen is second of the year. We'll get the assist for you in just a moment. Laraway has it for the Arrows. Now to Larry Lund in for John Gray. It hops over his stick as it rolls into the Birmingham zone. And Bob Stevenson back after it. There's it ahead on the wing. Laraway intercepts for the Arrows. Back at the right point. John Hughes missed it. Here's Al McLeod for Houston. Now to Larry Lund. And they call it offside at the Birmingham blue line. Hansen is second from Roberto and Stewart at 18.01. For Stewart, that's his second assist of the night. Having quite a game. Young John Stewart, who hails from Toronto, Ontario. Oh, no wonder. You like those Ontario boys, being one yourself. Well, of course, a lot of fine hockey players produced in that uh, Toronto district. You could name a few. Few of the Stanfields, right? Sure. Now Lund out there with Gray and Laraway against Stewart, Mahovlich, and Stevenson. 3-3 three, three game. Now here is Al McLeod on right wing to John Hughes in the center right zone. He's bumped by Turkowitz up with it. Stewart down the left wing, moving in against Al McLeod. Dumps it back for Stevenson. The arrows break it up. Here's Larry Lund for Houston. He couldn't clear it. Mahovlich holds it in. Frank Mahovlich checked by Lund. Got it now to Brent Hughes. He's checked in the play by Gray. And here comes Gray with Larry But Brent Hughes breaks it up with a tremendous defensive play for the Birmingham Bulls. He gave up his body for that one, throwing himself down around the skate and the sixth. And Brent Hughes made quite an effort. Well, he stretched out. He knew it was a dangerous situation. If Gray broke away, it would have been a two-on-one. He just reached out with that stick and hooked it back into his body. But... Great effort. As we mentioned, he has been one a thorn in the side of the Arrows and a former teammate of uh, yours, truly. Here come the Arrows back. Cam Connor trying to split the defense. Moves in against Western. Pulls Western down. The goal turned around. Hit the post. Connor hit the post and he pulled Garrett out. Now, here come the Birmingham Bulls the other way. A minute seven left here in the second period. 3-3 game. They clear it into the Houston zone. Going in, Paul Popeil checked by Casolato and Henderson. Shella has that puck ties it up along the boards with Casolato with 59 seconds remaining here in the second period. And it's tied at 3-3. Face off will be to the right of Arrow's goaltender, Lynn Zimmerman. Cam Connor had a chance as he moved through that Birmingham defense. Then Westrom cut him off. Connor pulled him down. May have been a penalty there. The goaltender, Gary, came out to cut down the angle, and Connor hit the post off to the right, where the Birmingham goaltender should have been. 59 seconds left in the second period. 3-3 game. Face off to the right of Lynn Zimmerman. In that Houston zone. Lund on the draw against Marin. 
They get lined up for the faceoff. Now the puck is dropped, and the Arrows get it to John Shella. Over on left wing for Taylor. He takes the pass off the boards. Out in center right for Larry Lunder. Knocks it down. Hit it with a high stick. Play is called. Birmingham Bulls picked it up. It was hit by a Houston player with a high stick. And there are 53 seconds remaining here in the second period. 3-3 game. Jack Stanfield will have a couple of guests for you at the end of period number two here. And we'll recap the scoring and bring you a little more conversation regarding tonight's game and the Houston Arrows. Here is Cam Connor flipping it ahead in center ice. Westrom for the bull. Shoots it in off Shella into the Houston zone. Up with it. Henderson trying to make a play. Centers it. John Tonelli breaks it up for the arrows, and here they come. Three on three. Tonelli down the right wing with Taylor and Connor. Here's Tonelli moving in. He lost it to Hoganson. Hoganson back on the left wing. Here come the Bulls. Three on two. And across the line, Hoganson. Now to Henderson. He overskates it. Cam Connor has it for the arrows. In the far corner to Paul Popeil. 24 seconds left in the period. Paul Popeil out for Cam Connor in the center ice zone. Long shot from center off the stick of Western that goes to the far corner. Castellano in his own zone. Gave it away to Connor. Centering it. Taylor a shot. That's blocked. Here come the Bulls. 12 seconds left. Moving through center. Henderson against Popeil. And on the right wing into the Houston zone. Looks to center it. Popeil breaks it up. Now Popeil on the end boards in his own end. Got it to Shella. Two seconds left. He clears it ahead for Tonelli. And that's going to do it for the second period. As the Houston Arrows and the Birmingham Bulls. Go off at the end of two periods, tied at 3-3 in a heck of a hockey game. There's a surprising note. The Birmingham Bulls outshot the Houston Arrows 14-4 in the second period of play. 14-4, the Bulls outshooting the Arrows in the second period, but it's all tied up at 3-3. Jack Stanfield will be coming along shortly with a couple of interviews for you. It's the Arrows 3, the Bulls 3 at the end of two periods, and from... The Coliseum in Birmingham, this is Houston Arrows Hockey. Introducing... Back to Hedberg, and it's offside of the play. Hull did not get a shot in that second period. He now has gone six periods without a shot on goal. Of course, we talked about it before, Bobby Hull uh, being bothered by a heavy cold. He sat out for the first six minutes of the second period of tonight's game, but now he's starting here with Hedberg and Olf Nielsen as the hotline is back together. Now it's in right. Hedberg back to his own line. And Tommy Bergman, you joined us late. Peter Sullivan's gone out of the lineup with a bad knee. Well, the Jets, they just continue to get hit by the injury problem. Now it's fired back down the ice by Marin out of play. The first indication, slight stretch of ligaments. With a knee, it takes a couple of days. The first indication, one week. If it's worse, it'll probably be anywhere from five to six. The Jets can uh, come up with a win tonight, move them into sole possession of second place, two points ahead of Quebec, and then five behind New England, who haven't won in the last four games. Now it's chopped into the Winnipeg zone by Casolato. Back for it, Bergman. Bergman throws it behind the net. Casolato first man in, slides it to the right side. That's stopped by Ulf Nilsson. He got it to Hedberg at the blue line. Hedberg had center ice for the Jets. In over the line, Hedberg goes into the corner. He and Westrom collide. Now Westrom gets the puck out on the wing to Marin. Marin at center ice for Henderson. Henderson checked by Long. Here comes Hull back. Hull over the line. Stopped by Dale Hoganson. Hoganson pumps it to Casolato. And center ice to Henderson. He dumps it into the Winnipeg zone. Daly on the boards for Hull. Hull now at the blue line to Barry Long. Long to Crisco to Ken Nilsson. Slap shot saved by Wood, and he holds on. Very long, as you've been mentioning, that has been having a great season so far. He took that puck up from his own blue line, fighting off a couple of Birmingham players, threw up to one of the Jets forwards who just gave it back to Barry, and they got a good shot just inside the blue line on goaltender Wayne Wood. And Barry, of course, on uh, this series before that, anticipating a Birmingham rush, Went up the ice and broke up the play, playing very well. Now it's kept in by Willie Lindstrom and then fired out by Baudouin. Back for it is Crisco to the red line for the Jets to Willie Lindstrom on the right wing. Lindstrom circles back into his own zone. Now at the red line, dumps it in on the left wing. Here's Kent Nelson picking it off. Makes the shot, walks behind the net and pumped it right onto the stick of Dave Gorman of Birmingham. Gorman. Up to the red line, where it's stopped by Ted Green. Green to Kent Nilsson, back of the Winnipeg zone to Green. 
Green starting out of the right defense. Up to LeBrot. He poked it in. LeBrot chasing it. Wood, first man there, takes LeBrot out of the play. Puck rolls behind the net and up into the stand. That was an odd play. Wayne Wood going right into the corner to throw a check into, uh, check into LeBrot, who was going after the puck. Just prior to that, uh, Willie Lindstrom uh, on a broken play on a pass that went, was going to Kent Nielsen, and uh, Nielsen was all alone. As the Birmingham players were skating away, as the puck was going against the grain, as you can call, then uh, he had a chance to get a shot on Wayne Wood. He pulled the goaltender out, went around him, and threw it in, in front of the net, but no one was there. Alf Nilsson's WHA record is on the line here in the third. He has not picked up a point tonight. And he has the WHA record coming into the night of 18 straight games with an assist at least. Here's Guindon's shot. That's an assist record, not a point record. Now beat on the left side, up at center ice, bounced it into the Winnipeg zone. Back for it is long, got it to the point but not out. Turkowitz into the corner for Napier, got it in front, kicked out by Daly off the stick. Now beat Keaton to the blue line, slap shot, and a save by Wood, and he dives on it. Well, that tells you the score two to one. Just some great play by both goaltenders. Birmingham looks like. They might have had a goal there. Joe Daly had his foot on the post and it prevented the goal. And right after that, Bobby Guindon was fed a breakaway pass. And Wayne Wood got a high shot and made a good save on that one. Some excellent play by Joe Daly for the Jets. And Wayne Wood in Birmingham's net. That's why you got a score like 2-1 to one right now for the Jets in the third period. Back behind the goal, Turco is to beat on the boards, tied up by Bergman. And it slides back into the corner. Durbano. For the Bulls, checked by Moffitt. Now it rolls to Beaton on the left side. Beaton fires into the red line, stopped by Barry Long. Across ice to Berkman. The Islanders beat the Red Wings 4 to 1 tonight in the NHL. Now Geen down at center ice. Up over the line on the right side. Geen down stops. Trying to get it out front. Back to Long, hopped over his stick. Geen down and Wayne Wood were teammates with the Montreal Junior Canadians. A couple of years back, about five or six, when they won the Memorial Cup together. Wood, out of his goal, slides it over to Durbano. Steve Durbano, up on the right wing, fired it to the red line, stopped by Hedberg. He dumps it back in. Durbano coming back for the Bulls. And center ice, backhands it in. All going back for it at the four minute mark in the third, checked by Henderson. Buck rolls to Green. He pumps it to Hedberg on the right wing. Hedberg trying to get it out. Takes it to center ice. Hedberg on the right side over the bull blue line. Cutting in. Backhand Wood the save. Rolls behind the net. Now Hull after it to Ulf Nilsson. Back to the point. That's knocked down. It rolls to the Winnipeg line. A race for it. And Crisco chops it off the glass. Now Henderson keeps it in. Firing it into Castellano to Henderson. Henderson taking it to the boards and slammed by Crisco there. Hedberg fires it back down the ice. Hoganson racing with Hull, and Hoganson got his stick on it. It's called for racing. He and Hull ram into the boards, and they're both down on that play, a race for the puck. A heavy collision in the end boards with Dale Hoganson and Bobby Hull. Hoganson's stick shattered, and uh, Hull possibly uh, maybe got part of it that hit him, but he's up. He's having a tough time these days uh, under the weather and then getting a good shot there with Hoganson in the far boards. Hoganson got a new stick. Just prior to that, Dave Crisco really belted Paul Henderson in the Jets end. Crisco uh, playing very well in the blue line tonight. Four minutes and 38 seconds into the third. The depleted ranks of the Jets leading it two to one. Sullivan up. Horning up. Schuberg up. Claxon up. Barry Long and Bergman come back up on the ice for the Jets. It's Billado left wing, Dave Gorman in the middle. On the right side, Ken Lindsman. Hughes and Bodwell are the defensemen. From the draw, Hope Nilsson to Bergman. He's knocked out. Got it to center ice to Lindsman. Left wing pass to LeBron. Up over the line. LeBron's back pass. Knocked down by Bodwell. Lindsman slides it behind the goal. Hughes kicked it to Lindsman. He's 
tied up. Now it's knocked loose by Hughes on the boards for Gorman. Matt sent a race to Bilodeau. In over the line. He goes into the corner. Bilodeau behind the net. Spun around and dumped by Long. Huck rolls to Gorman. Gorman on the boards, trying to center it. Got it behind the jet net to the far side. Stopped by LeBron. LeBron to Nilsson. Checked at the blue line. Bilodeau keeps it in. Backhands it right in front. Perry Long knocked it down. Penalty coming up to Bilodeau. He took a slap at Alf Nilsson. Now he's going after Nilsson. He's already got the first penalty. And Bilodeau just ran Nilsson after the whistle. Well, Bilodeau, just prior to that, hit Alf Nilsson on top of the head. And then he skated across the ice, and then he took another swing at him. And no doubt that'll hurt the Bulls now. They're only down by one goal. They certainly don't need a penalty at this time, giving the Jets a power play opportunity. Two to one, Winnipeg. This is Jets hockey from the Winnipeg Arena. Have you noticed something different about that big man of yours lately? Bilodeau, two minutes for high sticking, and then when he ran, Nilsson after the first minor, they just tacked two more on. So when they're down two to one, a bad time to take a penalty for the Birmingham Bulls on the Salisbury House power play. Draw the name of Mrs. T. Elkert. 901 Strathcona Street, Winnipeg, who selects the left winger. On the jet power play, Dan LeBron on the left side. Willie Lindstrom right, Kent Nilsson in the middle. And Bergman is back on the blue line with Law. Killing off the penalty, Napier. Lindsman up front, Baudouin Hughes. Kent Nilsson all the way back into his own zone to Willie Lindstrom. And center right. Dumped it off for LeBron. He's stopped by Baudouin. Baudouin checked by LeBron, right wing pass to Lindstrom, over the line. Slap shot, Wood kicks it off. And it rolls to Baudouin, who bounced it off the glass, down to the Winnipeg line to Lindstrom, over the line, checked by Barry Long. He backhands it to Kent Nilsson at center right. Over the line, penalty coming up on the play. Willie Lindstrom and Mark Napier will both go off on this call. Well, things are getting a little chippy out there following Bilodeau's penalty. Now got Willie Lindstrom going off. And Mark Napier and as well. Mark Napier. Still, the Jets will have an advantage. Lindstrom steps in on the penalty box. Now Napier goes in on the far side, or at least he's attempting to, after he has a little discussion with Ron Harris. That'll do him no good. Winnipeg one here in the third. 2-1 for the Jets. Originally, Villano went off four minutes for high sticking at 5.23. Then at 6.14 just now. Lindstrom for the Jets. Napier for Birmingham. Two minutes each for interference. All the NHL scores are final now. The Rangers were beaten by Buffalo in Buffalo 3-2. The Islanders over Detroit 4-1 in Detroit. Philadelphia at home shut out Los Angeles 2 to nothing, and Boston at home over St. Louis 4 to 1. The Bruins 11 straight without a loss. Here it's 2 to 1 Winnipeg, the only WHA game tonight. From the draw, back into the Bulls' corner. Westrom bounced it to the line, but not out. Nilsson over to Hedberg behind the goal. Back to Crisco. Crisco across to Hull. Hull. Trying to get it in front. Couldn't get his shot away. Checked by Hoganson. All without a stick. In the corner trying to tie it up. Now it's kicked back to Crisco at the point. He dumped it in. Nilsson shot save. Now Nilsson to Hull. Back to Crisco. On the boards to Hull. Hull stick handling across. Slap shot wide. And it comes all the way back to the Winnipeg zone. Back for it is Dave Crisco. High the jet goal, feeds it to Hull on the left wing. Fires it to the red line to Hedberg, busting over the line. Hedberg, shot, goal! Hedberg's goal. Crisco at center ice with one of the bowls. And uh, there's another set of two with Bobby Hall and Frank Beaton, both Nilsson and Neil Hoganson. But the rest of them are standing around holding each other. And we'll see if they get Linsman. That's who started it all with a cheap shot, pulling down Nilsson, skating up 
to center ice after the goal. No way to win a hockey game. We'll take a break. The season scored by number 15, Anders Hedberg. Assisted by number nine, Mark Napier. And number 60, I beg your pardon, number nine, Bobby Hall. And number 16, Dave Crisco. The time of the goal, 7.04. I repeat, Winnipeg goal from number 15, Anders Hedberg, his 17th of the season, assisted by number 9, Bobby Hull, and number 16, Dave Crisco. Time of the goal, 7.04. Players, including both goaltenders on either side. Seven, five of Birmingham and two Jets out of the game. So we've got some assemblance of order here at the Winnipeg Arena for 8,480. And once again, we apologize to our listeners. As I said, if I had my way, I'd have said good night about nine and a half minutes ago. We have to serve our listeners, and that's the only reason I'm still here, because this is absolute nonsense. All of Birmingham, most of the Birmingham players are all around the head official at center ice. Now, Harris is indicating his final decisions on the calls, and he's not going to take any more. Now Birmingham will skate back to the bench. And hopefully we'll start the action with a three to one lead for the Jets and lots of penalties to be served up. Face up will be at center ice. Three to one Jets. We're gonna go by power play and man advantage just by what's on the ice. Napier 
interfere. Was he given a game as well? Right, he left the penalty box. What's he doing arguing? I don't know. He's probably going pointing me, me, am I out or what? Well, he's out of the game. He can't argue. He's going to the dressing room. Same with anybody in the Jets. If you're out of the game, you go to the showers. Out. Dave Dunn is uh, going to the penalty box. Like you're saying before the game, uh, they dressed him and with an indication of the fact that if there are a lot of penalties to be served, like 10 minute misconduct, they would use Dave Dunn. And now here's his chance to, uh, to serve some uh, penalty minutes for some of the players that were ejected. Mind you, he was out on the ice during that brawl and he was tangled up with uh, Serge Baudouin. 22 minute delay because of this fight. At this point, we still haven't dropped the puck. Ron Harris uh, sending players to the penalty box. Barry Lawn, Kent Nilsson, and Dave Crisco for Winnipeg are out in front of Joe Daly. Paul Henderson with hey, and we're ready to go. And we're underway in the third period with the Jets leading three to one. Ken Nelson dumps it to the Birmingham line. Pat Westrom slides it through the middle. Barry Log controls it there. Long across to Crisco. Crisco dumps it through the middle. That's knocked out. Here's Ken Nelson picking it up. He's checked. Now Pat Westrom at the Winnipeg line dumps it in. And it's offside on the play. Well, with three aside, uh, on this situation, there's good opportunities here for breakaways for other side. You're not having that many players out in the ice and any sort of tip or a block. Lots of room to skate. Hoganson, Westrom, and Henderson for Birmingham at the Jets' blue line. Kent Nilsson, Crisco, and Long. And LeBrock changes off with Kent Nilsson now. Race up at the Winnipeg line, three to one Jets in the third period. Anders Hedberg looks like he uh, got a little bit of a injury. He's sitting in the penalty box now. He's um, possibly got a cut above his eye. Now it's dumped down the ice by LeBron. Back for it is Westrom for the Bulls. Slides it to Wayne Wood. Wood on the right side to Hoganson. Up to center ice to Henderson. He throws it back into Dale Hoganson. Hoganson across to Wayne Wood. He got it out to Hoganson. Up at center ice on the right side. Hoganson up over the blue line. Spun around on the play by Crisco. Still has it. Hoganson walking in front. Checked by Barry Law. Westrup on the left side. Into the corner. Trying to control it there. Barry Law takes it to the boards. It's knocked loose. Westrup back of the point now to get it. Fired it. Knocked down by Crisco. In the corner now. Hoganson on the left side. Dumps it in wide of the Winnipeg goal. Henderson after it. Goes back to center ice. Gets it over to Hoganson. Hoganson now slides it across on a change. Stewart kicks it back to Hoganson in the Birmingham zone. Both teams changing on the go. Now Hoganson at center ice. Checked by Gindon. It rolls into the Winnipeg zone. Gindon back to get it. Drops it behind the net for Dave Crisco. Crisco leading the Jets up over the blue line at center ice. Slaps it in. Wood deflected it wide. Wood in the corner to Stewart. Stewart checked by Ginda. Back to Bergman. Bergman at the point. Dumps it in. Ginda shot save. Hit the goalpost on a tap by Ginda. Now it's brought back by Hughes, but offside at the Winnipeg line. That's one of the stars, no doubt, in tonight's game. Bobby Ginda just skating miles tonight and having an excellent opportunity on a slow dribbler past Wayne Wood, which hit the goalpost on the far side and moving very slowly. And Gindon almost had a second goal of the night. But face off with 52 seconds left in the first 10 minutes of the third period. We still have three aside. With all those penalties to be served, eight majors in a brawl following Hetberg's goal at 7.04. Seven players have been ejected from the game. Now taken into the corner by Baudouin. He and Moffat tie it up in the jet zone, and it's whistled down there. Oh, Nilsson was ejected. Game misconduct. Uh, uh, there goes his record. It stops at 18 games. 
with at least one assist. Did not pick up a point tonight. That is the new WHA record. It'll stand in 18 straight games that he has played with an assist, at least one assist. Now it's taken by Lyle Moffitt. In the Winnipeg zone to Daly. Daly down to cover up. Score! Stewart chopped it in. Goal with head official Ron Harris on the penalties. And uh, another 10 minutes or so, we'll be here three hours. Right from the faceoff at 7.30. It's almost 10.30 now here. And we still got another 10 minutes of hockey, which could make it three and a half hours before we're finished tonight. And if there's another goal by Birmingham, we might have overtime. Bring it to the Jets lane at the midway portion of the third period as the teams have three attackers each. And we're back underway. Brent Hughes across at his own line to Baudouin. Up to Hughes at center ice. In over the line. Fired it. Score! Hughes catching the short corner. And Season scored by number three, Brent Hughes. Assisted by number 17, Serge Baudouin. And number 19, Paul Henderson. The time of the goal, 10-12. Over the line, Nilsson dumps it in for a long shot. Saved by Wayne Wood on a trickler. Barry Long was just inches away from getting a possible goal there with Kent Nilsson driving a shot in. And Long just had to go in behind him, and he just took a last-second swing, and the Bulls are right back in this game, tying it up 3-3 at 9-24. John Stewart from Hughes, 10-12 uh, Hughes from Baudouin and Henderson. Aesop will be to the right of Wayne Wood, deadlocked at three all. From the draw, Ken Nilsson kicks it into the corner. Back for it is Hughes. He slides it behind the net to Baudouin. Baudouin off the boards, got it to center ice. That's picked up by Stewart. Stewart up over the jet line, spun around by Long. Ken Nilsson picks it up. Up to center ice. Nilsson over the line. Hit into the boards by Hughes. Now Stewart runs it in. Penalty coming up to John Stewart. He'll go off. But it won't make any difference man advantage wise. He'll still stay at three. Still stay at three. He can run them all night here. Birmingham has scored two goals for that situation. Hughes' goal was a shot just above the face-off circle, beat Joe Daly, and tying the game up at 3-3. John Stewart. John Stewart. John Stewart. Interference. 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 Interference to John Stewart at 10-52. 3-3 the score. And no difference in men on the ice as far as numbers. Westrom behind the Bulls' goal. Slides over to Casolato. He got it to the red line. Billy Lasuk dumped it back in. That's offside. Dan LeBratton was already inside the line and whistled down on the play. 8,480 the paid attendance here tonight. That means the Jets now had 11 home games. 99,544 have been on hand for an average of 9,049 in a building that holds just over 10,200 with the rafters packed. Now the head official, Ron Harris, is back at the penalty box. He skates away now, just checking on the penalty situation. From the draw, back to Bergman. Bergman at the red line, back to Billy Lesuk. Lesuk in his own zone. Slides it to Lebrot. Lebrot back to Billy Lesuk. At center ice, he backhands it down into the bull zone. Wood out of the goal, leaves it for Westrom, and it's called for icing. Face out will move the length of the ice into the Winnipeg zone. Three goals in this third period. Jets made it three to one. Anders Hedberg at 7.04 from Holland Crisco, and then we had a bench clearing brawl, which saw eight majors and seven players ejected. And then with three aside, Birmingham got two goals at 9.24. John Stewart and the 10.12 Brent Hughes. Now Bill Lesuk in his own zone across to Tommy Bergman. Bergman up over the blue line for Winnipeg. At the center ice area, takes it in over the bull line, slides it to LeBrot. LeBrot backhands it to Billy Lesuk. Slap shot. Wood the save coming out to cut down the angle. 
And he holds on, almost trickled between his legs. Good setup there, Bergman to Lebrot. Set up Lesouk, who had a good drive from that left side. Wood came way out of his net, and he blocked the shot, and he was outside the outer rims of the faceoff circle, about halfway to the blue line. Good play by Wayne Wood as well. Here we go, another meeting. Oh, and they just don't keep going. You know, the more they delay this game, and timekeepers either don't know what's going on or something, but every time there's a whistle, they blow their own horn and get the referee over there for another delay. Who cares? Play three aside, let's get it over with. Hall's got 22 seconds left in his five minute penalty. Hedberg has 718, according to the clock. Now Harris goes to his note paper again. Ron Harris worked the game in Quebec last night. Like the Bulls, had trouble in his snowstorm getting out of there. Flew here today and is working tonight. And I'll tell you, right about now, he probably would say, let's get this over with. Now <laughs> uh, Harris heading back into the Birmingham zone with a face off will be. See, it signifies it to the right circle. 3-3 three, three to score, 8-18 left. Castellato, Hoganson, and Westrup. Long at a point, shot wide. Long, Guignan, and Crisco for Winnipeg. Crisco dumps it in. Castellato back to get it. Puts it behind the net to Westrup. Westrup back for Hoganson. Hoganson holding on to it behind the net. Takes his time now. Hoganson over to Castellato. Up over the blue line is center ice. Castellato to the Winnipeg line, moving in on the right side, taken to the boards by Crisco. Now it's knocked behind the net. Westrom trying to get it out front, feeds it back to the point, but there's no one there. Hogan's chases it back to his own line. Throws it over to goaltender Wood to Hoganson. Hoganson now at center ice. Over the blue line, Hoganson trying to take it in front, goes in the corner, into the boards by Crisco. And they tie it up for a face off. David Crisco not holding back on any of the hits. He's throwing some good body checks into tonight's game. And there was a good indication taking Hogerson into the corner. Crisco and Bobby Guindon having good games tonight for the Jets. And once again, the buzzer goes at the penalty box. And no doubt there's a lot of confusion too. You have the Birmingham players leaning over and uh, probably confusing the timekeepers. They're right there and uh, throwing in a few shots. and no. No doubt confusing them uh, that much more. Well, both teams, they should just stay out of it. Let the officials run That's right. this game. And, uh, 7 28 left in the marathon show. Live from the Winnipeg Arena. We're going for the world's record. Where's Bud Bruna to? Get him out of retirement. Score the overtime winner here. 2 30 in the morning. I tell you, it's going to be a long one tonight. We're three minutes away from three. Hours. If Knuckles gets in from Montreal, he'd be able to take in this game. <laughs> Face off <laughs> to the left of Joe Daly in a tied hockey game. Some would refer to it as a hockey game. Others may not. As Ron Harris is uh, continuing his discussion at the penalty box. We had three fans behind the penalty box thrown out uh, by the hit official tonight. No doubt they were throwing a few bad remarks towards him. Three aside in front of the goaltender, so that's four each. As it's taken by Baudouin. Baudouin of the Winnipeg zone takes it out to center ice. Now dumps it back to Wayne Wood. Wood off to the right of the goal. Fires it to Hughes at the blue line. His pass knocked down by Berkman. And it's picked up by Baudouin. Up to center ice for Birmingham. In over the blue line, in on the left side. Baudouin trying to get it out front. Stick handles to the corner, back hands it back. Hughes at the point, slap shot, knocked down. Mike Gein down to Green. Green kicks it behind the net and tied up there by goaltender Joe Daly. Jets had trouble around that net. Teddy Green couldn't find it. And Joe Daly, in a mass of legs, pulled it out, took it behind the net, and pinned it for a face off. As both teams are still playing three aside, Bobby Hall's penalty has expired. He's sitting on the bench now. And no doubt will be looking for another shift out there. 
The Jets will have, let's see, Bergman goes off. They have Ted Green, and Dave Crisco, and Bob McGee done. Consolato, Westerman, Hokinson. For Birmingham, 3-3 score. On the face off, back to Hoganson. Hoganson on the right side, trying to work it in front. Checked by Crisco. Behind the net, Hoganson after it. Coming out on the left side, back all the way to center ice. Now he throws it back to Wayne Wood. Wood fakes the pass, then fires it to Hoganson. Hoganson in his own zone. Fires it across to Pat Westrom. The center ice checked by Crisco to Ginda. That's offside at the blue line. Fans didn't like that call as the Gindon was taking the puck over the blue line. And are we going to have any more discussions at the penalty box? No, it looks like we're going to continue the action with 6.29 remaining in this third period. 3-3 the score. And we see that Jim Turkowicz has two minutes, pardon me, is two minute minor, 37 seconds left in his penalty. From the face of the Bulls line, back to Hughes. Up for Baudouin, the center ice to Henderson. In over the blue line, drop pass to Hughes, moving in. He's dumped by Lebrot. Loose puck goes to Tommy Berkman. Berkman trying behind the net, kicked it over to the right side, goes after it, pushed it to Long. He slides it around to the left side. To Dan Lebrot. Lebrot now in a tight game, back to Berkman. Berkman starting out for Winnipeg. Takes his time to the blue line. Up at center ice. Now Berkman in over the line on the left side. Stops at the face-off circle. Feeds it back to Long. Long moving in. Back hands it into the corner to LeBron. And back to Berkman. Berkman cruising in. Slap shot. Save. Rebound. LeBron took it behind the net. Now feeds it back to Berkman. Slap shot. Wood kicks it out. And it's taken by Baudouin. Baudouin fires it down to the Winnipeg zone. Five and a half minutes left in the third. 3-3. Three, three. Here's LeBrot up over the line on the left wing. Stop there. Casalato starts back for Birmingham as LeBrot and Hoganson start to push and shove in the Birmingham zone. Quickly. Long steps between those two, and I think they're both going to go off. You bet everything here tonight, Ed. Well, Kenny, one of the big things that's been overlooked thus far, of course, the lack of manpower on both sides, but the Jets. Alf Nielsen with a game misconduct. Anders Hedberg with 10 minutes with two five-minute majors. Bobby Hull with a five-minute major. And you just can't take that line away from the Winnipeg Jets and hope to hold the Bulls or anybody even for that matter. But give the Bulls credit. Two goals, 48 seconds apart with the team's four aside. And it's deadlocked at 3-3 with 5.21 left in the third period. Well, wipe out the nonsense at that third goal by the Jets. You got yourself a pretty good hockey game here tonight. Now we have more penalties. Hoganson and LeBrot go into the box. And there's no room on a penalty clock for their penalty, so we'll have to listen closely. <laughs> See if we can pick it up. The teams are still Four aside. Is to number 33, Dale Hoganson. Two minutes for roughing. To Winnipeg's number 21, Dan LeBratton. Two minutes for high sticking. The time of the penalties, 14.39. He fired it to the red line. Dave Crisco knocks it down there for Winnipeg. Crisco bringing it back. Up over the blue line. Crisco on the right side. Let's it slide in as he runs into Baudouin. It's brought back by Brent Hughes in a tight game. At center ice. In over the blue line. Drop pass to Baudouin. His shot. Daly kicks it up. Castellano from behind the goal. Trying to jam it at the side of the goal. And Daly took it away. He gives it to Kent Nilsson. Nilsson now. Starting out. Up at center ice for Winnipeg. Kent Nilsson over the line. Split to the fence. He's knocked out of the play. And Fred Hughes has got a tripping penalty. Kent Nelson had deked him and gone by him. Fred Hughes hauled him down. And as I said again, you can do it all you want because it don't matter. You're not going to pay any penalties with nobody getting any less. Man, I pull them all down because 
Eddie, you can fill that box up. Kenny, the last penalties was Hoganson for roughing, LeBratton for high sticking at 1439. This last one, Hughes for tripping at 1533. But as you say, they'll be playing four aside till I don't know what freeze is over. A side will be to the right of Wayne Wood. Wood out talking to referee Ron Harris. 427 left in regulation play. Threes across the board. 3-3 three, three in the third. Now Billy Lasuk in the corner with Jim Turco is. They tie it up against the boards. And we have another face-off. So the Jets are really hurting at center tonight. Ken Nilsson is really the only regular center left in the lineup. You're right, Kenny. And prior to the brawl, it was a real gutsy performance by the Winnipeg Jets. And two, as they call them, uh, lesser lights at times. Bobby Guindon and Dave Crisco certainly rewarded tonight. Here's Barry Long inside the blue line. Checked by Henderson. He backhands it right to Wayne Wood. Wood to Turkowitz behind the goal. Jim Turkowitz on the left wing to Westrom. Rink wide for Henderson. Henderson up over the Winnipeg line. Back to Westrom. He fakes the shot. Walks in. Slap shot wide. Comes off the boards down to the Birmingham line. Back for it is Turkowitz. Up at center ice to Westrom. Westrom to the line. Dumps it in. Daly out to his left. Slides it behind the goal to Barry Long. Long kicks it to the blue line. Now fires at the red line to Bill Lasuk with one man back. Over the line, shot. Wood caught it, and he worms it ahead. Wayne Wood pushed it into the corner as he and Lasuk collide. Now Lasuk takes Turkowitz into the boards and gets a face off. Well, Kenny, the goaltenders are having trouble tonight defensively. I don't know what they're trying to do. Joe Daly in particular with Bergman and Crisco on a couple of occasions. That time, Wayne Wood, whatever he's doing in a 3-3 game, coming out that far, almost had it poke checked off his stick by Billy Lasuk. Finally dumped it into the corner, and they've got the face off to the left of Wayne Wood now. 3.29 left in the third period, a 3-3 game. From the draw of the Birmingham zone, Serge Baudouin on the right side to Stewart. Stewart now up to center ice to the Winnipeg line and in. Slides it into Casalato. Shot. Daly kicks it off. And it's whistled down to the play. Tripping penalty coming up to the Winnipeg Jets. Bob Kingdown, I believe, will be the man. Hauling down Tony Casalato. 3.14 left. It is gained on Kenny Tripping at 16.46. Dennis First will talk to one of the stars in tonight's game from ice level when it's all over. Art Stratton will be with me in a postgame show. Now here is... Crisco firing it to Kent Nilsson up at center ice. One man back in a tight game. Nilsson over the line. Stick handles. Fired it across to Crisco. Crisco slap shot went wide. Comes all the way back down the ice. Daly out of the goal. Slides it over to Kent Nilsson. Jets are changing on the go. Kent Nilsson up the ice. Very long and a breakaway. All alone. Deep. Hope check on the play, but it was offside on the pass. You're right, Kenny. They couldn't hear the whistle for the roar of the crowd. Barry Long just coming out, got the long pass, but it was offside. Wow, what fans are left here got a little bit excited on that one. As Barry Long was scooting her home. We've had everything tonight. It was a 1-0 hockey game. Ken Lindsman scoring in the first period. The Jets went ahead 2-1 in the second on goals by Guindon and Crystal. They enlarged it to 3-1 on a goal by Hedberg. A power play goal before the ruckus. And then John Stewart, Brent Hughes, 48 seconds apart, and a 3-3 hockey game. Last time these two teams played here, it was 2-2 in overtime. So... Don't be surprised if we go to overtime. Out back to Bergman. On the boards to Ken Nelson. Rookie for the Jets. Circles in his own zone. Two and a half minutes left in regulation play. Out Ken Nelson. Up at center ice. To the bowl line and in. Drop pass to Bergman. Bergman slap shot. Goes off Turkowitz into the corner. All Henderson now for the Bulls. Starting out 
Takes his time to the blue line up at center ice. Henderson's drop pass to Westrom. Westrom now back pedals it to the open wing. Stopped by Nilsson. He fires it to the open wing for Long. Long to the Birmingham line and in. Barry Long controlling the puck. Dumps it to Nilsson. Back to Bergman. Moving in. Bergman spun around to the play. Here's a break. Henderson racing up to center ice all alone. Over the blue line. Deep shot. Saved by Daly. Diving at that one. Now it's brought back by Nilsson. At center ice. Over the blue line. Ken Nilsson back to Crisco. Shot wide. Comes up on the netting. Crisco knocks it loose behind the goal, and it's taken there by Turkowitz. Now taken to Henderson. Four aside now on manpower, not including the goaltender. Henderson has it whistled down. Let's see now. They'll whistle it down at center ice. I think the, ben the penalty by the players got out. And get it over with tonight. 3-3 score from the draw, Kent Nilsson. As the teams are five aside, including goaltenders. Gorman knocked it down at center ice, pumped it back into his own zone to Wayne Wood. Wood almost put it on Nilsson's stick, trying to get it to center ice. Now Serge Baudouin for Birmingham. Up to the red line of Paul Henderson. Over the line, Henderson back to Baudouin, checked by Kent Nilsson. A minute left. Nilsson at center ice. In over the blue line, across to Crisco, deep, saved by Wood, poked it off his stick. Here comes Hoganson, up at the red line. In over the blue line, Hoganson back to Henderson. His pass knocked down. And here's Hedberg, at center right with one man back. Up over the line, his shot saved by Wood. Hedberg in the corner, trying to tie it up, centered it up front. Green, slap shot, knocked down in front by Baudouin. And it rolls to center right. 25 seconds left in regulation play. Offside at the Birmingham Blue Line. Well, Kenny, two big chances for the Winnipeg Jets. Dave Crisco all alone on a two-on-one with Kent Nielsen. Kent Nielsen laid it perfectly, and Wood timed it perfectly to poke check the Salado. Dale Hoganson and Pat Wester in front of Wayne Wood. In a tied game with 22 seconds left in the third period. Back for it now is Hoganson. The castle out of the Hogan.
table. Two fights started. And just when it looked like the players would sort out the problems, defenseman Steve Durbano charged from the bench and blindsided Bobby Hull to trigger a bench-clearing brawl, something the WHA cities have grown accustomed to as the league slowly destroys itself. 